You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're gonna hit a good one and most of your playing partners are gonna struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are gonna share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. I got the ultimate drill to help you absolutely compress the heck out of those irons, hit the ground consistently, hit it just like the tour pros with lots of shaffling and releasing out in front really long. Let's get right into it. Now, what, do, what does a good iron shot look like? I'm gonna move this impact bag for just one second. We'll get back to that. But a good iron shot, I have lag in the downswing. So my hands are over top of the golf ball and the club is way back here. That way when I get to the golf ball, I have shaft lean. Now, what that means is if you're normal loft on your pitching wedge, if the shaft is straight up and down, this is somewhere in the mid 40s uh, loft. Most clubs have something like that. What the pros do is they take about 30% of that loft off, meaning that the shaft is leaning forward almost 15 degrees when they contact this golf ball with virtually all your tour players. That allows you to compress the ball more, that allows you to be more consistent, because now your hands are leading the way. And then from there, they really stay square and release a long way in front. So most recreational players, what they'll do is they'll flip or cast, they have the club shaft straight up and down, and then right after impact, that club shoots up into the air as I start to flip up and my arms fold up like the chicken wing. So imagine the club not having very much shaft lean or even negative shaft lean, and then the club shoots up as we chicken wing. I'm exaggerating there, but imagine it's coming here and then straight up. Now the pros are de-lofting it and it continues down the target line much longer. So we get this shaft lean and then the club stays low to the ground long into the follow through and doesn't whip past the hands. That's how they're doing it. Now I got a four step drill that's gonna help you to do exactly that. So I'm gonna put this impact bag where the inside of the bag, and you can use any kind of impact bag you want. This is one that I got from Eyeline Golf that I like um, because of one of the angles it has. But I'll put about a grip width behind the golf ball and I want the middle of the golf ball in line with the inside of this impact bag. Now from there, what that's gonna teach me to do is to get from the inside, to shallow this club out, to come from the inside. That way I can miss this bag and then come in and hit this ball squarely. So you're gonna train yourself to miss the bag, have shaft lean, and still hit this golf ball. There we go, dead solid there, really nice. And we can see the launch angle, where is the launch angle on here? 21 degrees of launch, meaning it's coming out like this. That's pretty low for a pitching wedge that has 46 degrees of loft or so on it. So I really had that shaft leaning forward. Now once you've done that, you do a few of those come from the inside. Now we're gonna take this same bag, we're gonna put it behind us to where if I kept my arm straight and I just rotated, I would hit most of the way up the bag. I'm gonna scoot it back just a little bit more. So I know if my arms are straight, I'm gonna hit this bag, meaning that my left arm, right arm are both locked elbows are straight, I would hit it. Now, if my club has lag, like I would in the downswing, and shaft lean, I would miss this bag because it's not as long. See, when I, when I have lag, it pulls it away from that golf bag. So I'm gonna set up this impact bag to where I would hit it with straight arms. That way I have to have lag in the downswing. Now from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my nose behind the golf ball and my weight in front of the golf ball. So I'm shifting to my left, but still keeping my nose behind it. That's getting me in a position that I can miss this bag and still hit a really good clean golf shot. There you go, another one, really nice and straight. Take that every time, launch angle 20.6. So again, I'm getting shaft lean there on these shots. All right, so if you want to buy this exact bag, you want this exact one we're talking about with the angled side on it, the really durable material where you can hit the heck out of it, it's not gonna mess it up with a golf club and it's the same height, so you can do the drill that we just talked about. This bag is from iLine Golf. I'll put a link down below in the description or somewhere on this page, you'll see a link. If you purchase from that link, we get a few bucks back from iLine Golf, helps me to make some more great videos for you, and I'm gonna be using this in future videos. Now, if not, don't worry about it. Get a rolled up blanket, get a pillow, get something like that. It won't be quite as good as this, but anything will work. Just make sure you do the drill with whatever you have. Now, if you find yourself casting, you get immediate feedback because now I'm gonna be hitting this golf bag. I'll go ahead and cast this one and I'm gonna smack that bag. These are really heavy duty, so it's not gonna hurt anything 
if you hit this back, it's what it's designed for. The third step to this drill, so now I got the club shallow, I got some shaft lean, we're gonna really kick up that shaft lean. Or now we're gonna use the slanted side of this bag, so this bag is made, designed with an angle, just like we were talking about what the pros are doing. So this is straight up and down, here's that shaft lean. So this side of the bag is angled, and I wanna feel like my entire shaft hits the bag at the same time. So if I flip it, boom, I'm like this. So start out slow and work on this. Again, a little weight shift and then your downswing. Shift my weight, then I swing down and hit it in the golf bag. Again, I'm gonna swing back, shift my weight left, then I come down and hit the golf bag. I'm gonna do that five or 10 times to really get the feel for this. Right, I'm letting the lag happen in my wrist. My hands are going back wide and then I'm getting that wrist angle. Bang, I'm hitting it there. Once you get comfortable with that, then you go ahead and go faster and faster until eventually you're making full swings and you're really popping the bag, put some energy into that thing. You'll know you're doing this right when you can pop the bag like that and your club isn't going all the way to here. Right, if I pop this bag again, you're gonna see I really hit it, but look how my hands are here. I didn't try to flip through it and muscle through the shot. That's when you know you're getting really efficient at getting the energy through the golf bag. Now finally, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this where I put the bag in front quite a bit. Now my ball may hit into this, so if you have stuff around, you may not wanna use the golf ball. I'm not gonna use it here because we've got some lights up above, I'm afraid I might break one. This would be more of an outdoor type drill. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit that golf ball again, and then I'm gonna extend through the shot. Now in order to do that, that keeps me down in my posture, that makes me have a lot of lag and it makes me release through the golf shot here. So again, you'll see I'm gonna brush the ground here and I'm gonna hit this bag way out in front. So weight shift left to stay in my posture and I really extend through the shot, right? I had to reach to hit that golf bag. The players that I see that struggle, chicken wing folded up, we would completely miss that golf bag. So let me show you what the, the wrong way of doing it would be. I'll put this in front, I'm gonna do my chicken wing flip, Right, and now I didn't get anywhere near the bag. For me, I like to keep on scooting a little farther and farther in front until I can barely reach it and then hit a shot into that. Be careful on that one because you don't wanna tweak your wrist, your hands, your arms. For most players, that's gonna be no golf ball when you're hitting it and just kinda going half speed. You don't really wanna hit the bag out in front too hard when you're doing that because it could twist your club slightly and feel a little bit weird. The secret to consistency in ball speed on the golf course is forward shaft lean, bar none. If we have forward shaft lean, then that club face is gonna be stable through impact, meaning the shots are gonna be much more consistent. They're gonna be much straighter, there's gonna be less curve. And if we are, have shaft lean, we're also de-lofting the club, meaning we're gonna get more energy into the ball and the ball speed's gonna be higher. So this is a must have if we're wanting to be consistent on the golf course and hit great shots. We can actually even swing easier and hit the ball further. So, what we're gonna go over today is something you may have heard before, but if you stick with me, I'm gonna show you how you're gonna be able to finally get forward shaft lean every single time you swing. So if you've seen me do any uh, instruction yet, you know that I really like to explain things in extreme. I think it's a really easy way to make, so we can easily see what we need to see so that we can make easy adjustments in our golf swing. So if I'm looking for forward shaft lean, I have to be a certain height from the ground. So let me explain that in the extreme. The extreme would be if I'm standing straight up and down. If I'm standing straight up and down when I make my swing, if I were to get forward shaft lean, I wouldn't even be able to reach the ball. I can't physically reach it. So if I'm standing straight up and down to be able to hit this ball, I'm going to have to flip the club. I'm going to have to extend to hit this shot. So the opposite of that, that would be the extreme. The opposite of that would be me covering the ball with my chest. So let me explain covering the ball very quickly. Covering the ball, if I was going to cover the ball, it's almost like I'm putting a roof on it. This would be me completely covering the ball. Now we can't actually do this when we're swinging, so what we're going to do is we're going to cover it to a certain extent. The more that my sternum gets closer to the ball, the more that I'm covering the ball with my chest. And this is the secret to getting forward shaft lean. It's gonna control my height so that I can get forward shaft lean. So if I go to cover the ball, and I'm gonna over-exaggerate this, 
even more, just like I did standing straight up and down, and I were to release the club early, I would hit, this is almost two feet behind this ball. So in order for me to hit this ball solidly, I'm gonna have to do something in order to do that. And the only way to do that is to get forward shaft lean. I guess I could do something kind of weird, but this is not going to be something we're gonna be able to do in a full swing. So if I'm covering the ball, I have to get my hands in front to get forward shaft lean. So the opposite, if I do this and I really, really cover the ball and I hit this ball solidly, that ball is gonna come out super, super low. You can see my, uh, my loft, on that was 4.6. That's crazy low compared to a, uh, a regular golf shot. So how do we apply this to our full swing? Well, the answer is this, guys. It's really this simple. We, and when we're making our downswing, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this, we are going to really, in our minds, over-exaggerate this chest getting closer and closer to the ball. And we wanna do this on our downswing. So if we're doing this ideally, we're gonna stay about the same height on our backswing. Then on our downswing, we are going to, on our downswing, cover the ball with our chest as much as we possibly can. Even in your mind, if you feel like I was doing it earlier, when my chest is completely over the ball, this is what we're gonna feel like we're doing. Now, when it actually happens when you go to hit the ball, your mind's gonna know where that club head is, so you're not gonna actually be able to get this low. If you do get this low, that's great. You can start toning it down a little bit, but most of the time, the player is gonna feel this. Now, the number one mistake, just real quick, that you don't wanna make is you don't wanna do this with your nose. You don't want your head to go down. You wanna make sure your actual shirt buttons or your sternum goes down. So I like to tell my students to keep their, the distance between their nose and their shirt button the same, and we don't wanna tuck our chin. We wanna make sure we keep that distance the same as we cover the ball with our chest. So when you're working on this to start off with, you're gonna, have, you're gonna need to make sure you pay attention to where your bottom point is because it's gonna be much different than it was before. So the drill you wanna do is start off with taking nice easy swings, really on the downswing, cover the ball with the chest as much as you possibly can and hit the ball solidly. If you don't hit it solidly at first, that's fine, but you will hit it solidly if you keep covering it. You're just gonna have to find a little bit different way than you're used to to get to the ball. So I am covering this. I know it looks a little bit weird, but I'm really over-exaggerating this so I can keep my chest down. So what we're gonna do is really work on covering the ball consistently down as far as we can go and hit it solidly. Once we feel like we can do that consistently, we're gonna make sure that when we can check ourselves on camera, we're gonna make sure that we are, we are staying either the same height as we're coming into the downswing or we're even covering it a little bit more. And that way it's going to guarantee if we hit that ball solidly that the hands are gonna be in front We'll have that stable club head. We can release it out in front and get that ball speed that we're looking for. So once we feel like we've really got it. So there we go. That would be about a normal loft. That's actually a little bit lower than normal, about 19.1. The one before that, I think, was like around 10 degrees. So you can see by overdoing this, we can really make sure that we get that forward shaft lean. So when you're working on this, make sure that that chest is covering the ball as much as, it pos as, much as you possibly can and this will guarantee when you hit it solidly that you'll have forward shaft lean because if you don't, we're gonna bottom out way behind it. So I'm gonna do one more here. We're gonna make sure that on the downswing, I'm covering the ball. I'm feeling like I'm getting down here and hitting the ball solidly. Now, there we go, it came out super low. And you'll see when you start covering the ball with the chest more and more, you're gonna have a very good problem. That's having too much forward shaft lean. Once you have that, it's gonna be really easy to tone down because all you have to do to tone down the shaft lean is control the height that you cover the ball with your chest on the downswing. If you wanna hit your iron solid, then you have to get the hands in front of the ball at impact. Now, you know that getting the hands in front is gonna deal off the face and get you more compression, but it's also gonna really improve the contact that you make on the face. So let me show you here. If I have this club and I have it straight up and down, no shaft lean, look where the contact point is. It's maybe one or two grooves up on the face. Now, if I start leaning that shaft forward, that contact point goes up to the fourth or fifth groove on the face, which is gonna be more in the sweet spot of the face. So what this means is, if you're someone who doesn't get the hands ahead, your best case scenario is basically to hit it thin, right? You're gonna hit a lot of chunk shots, but you're gonna hit a lot of thin shots and maybe even some top shots. The only way you're not going to is if the ball is sitting up on the grass like it's on a tee, and it's rarely actually gonna be like that. So how do we get those hands in front at impact? Well, if you look at tour players, what you're going to see is more rotation of the body 
and you're going to see the hands in front. And you're going to see how this club is more parallel with my chest. When you look at players that early release, the hips kind of square up. We throw the arms in front, and this club is more perpendicular to my chest. So I have a great drill for you that's going to help you get that proper feeling of getting that club more parallel with your chest as you're coming through impact. So I got this PVC pipe here. I got this at a home improvement store. It was a couple dollars. You can find it at about any home improvement store, I would imagine. It was pre-cut like this. This is about five feet. And what you're going to do is you're going to grip this PVC pipe right in the middle of it. And you're going to set up as if this PVC pipe is a golf club and you're going to have the end of this PVC pipe touching your side here. And what we're going to do initially here is we're going to just take some three quarter swings where we turn up here. We're going to get this pipe parallel with my chest and then I need to keep it parallel with my chest as I come all the way through. And that's gonna help you learn the proper rotation and train your body to rotate in the right way instead of throwing it in front. So what do we need to be feeling in our feet? Well, what we need to feel is a transfer of pressure into our lead foot. So that way, that's gonna allow us to get lower into the ground. We're gonna kinda of squat into the ground and that's gonna allow us to be able to push into the ground and push our hip and our chest back and out of the way. So what you want to imagine here is that you're pushing down into the ground and then out away from you at about a 45 degree angle. That's going to help me drive my hip back. So I want to kind of squat pressure into my lead leg and then drive that hip back out of the way. You almost want to imagine there's a rope attached to your belt loop here and the rope's kind of going around your side. Then you got a buddy over here pulling on that rope and they're ripping your hips open as you're coming through. So that's what you want to feel. You get here the pipe parallel with your chest, and then you want to feel a squat into the ground and pivot through, and that, that pipe stays parallel with your chest. So I want you to start out really, really slow with that. I went probably a little bit too fast for most of you in the beginning there, but go really, really slow with that. Maintain those positions and then build up the speed faster and faster and faster until basically it feels like it's a full speed where you're bringing it here parallel with the chest and you're able to rotate properly to keep that parallel with your chest the whole time. Once you do that, now let's have a little fun and let's try hitting some shots, maintaining that same thing. So I'm gonna take this club, I'm gonna to try to get it to where it's parallel with my chest and I'm gonna keep it parallel with my chest all the way through. I'm not gonna let it go. I'm not gonna throw my arms in front. The only thing that's bringing this club into the ball is the rotation of my body. I'm gonna really, really exaggerate that. So I have a seven iron here, dynamic loft. Dynamic loft is the loft that you're presenting to the ball at impact. Good dynamic law for a seven iron is gonna be about 23 degrees. Those who early release and flip are gonna be more in like the 30, 33 degree range with a seven iron. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hit a ball here. I'm gonna go really, really slow. I'm gonna to try to get as far below 23 degrees as I can. And this is gonna be a shorter swing. Again, it's like gonna be like a three quarter swing. I'm only turning to where this club gets parallel with my chest. And I'm gonna try and turn all the way through. And again, I'm not going for speed here. I'm going to get that shaft lean and get that rotation as much as I possibly can. You're doing the same thing you did with the pipe. You're starting out slow and then building up the speed. One thing you can also do, you know, if you're not hitting off of a mat to make it a little bit easier in the beginning when you're going slow is to tee the ball up. So I'm hitting off a mat here so I don't need to tee it up. What I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna take my normal stance I'm gonna try and go here and then really try to get that shaft leaning forward as I'm coming through all rotation of my body. Let's see how low we can get it to come out. All right, so that was really, really well compressed. I mentioned that 23 degrees is pretty good. I got that to be 12.4. That's even, that's like almost half of, of what it normally is. So what I would do there, once I saw that, that was only 61 miles per hour. I would try to build that up. Now you don't have to have a fancy launch monitor to tell you this you're gonna see for yourself that it's gonna go a lot lower than what you normally do. What may be a good exercise in, to begin with is to hit some shots to get an idea of how high that ball is launching initially, and then you can do these shots and you'll be amazed at how much lower it goes and how much more compressed it's gonna, it's gonna feel. So start out slow with it. Again, the idea in the beginning is not to go really fast. The idea is to get that ball to launch as low as possible. You wanna imagine you're hitting that ball underneath a doorway, really, really low. Once you get more comfortable with that, now, once we kind of get up to full speed with that, just like you did with the pipe, and you don't see the ball flight start to raise too much, you know, if it starts to raise too much, then go a little bit slower and then start to build it back up again, what we can do is try to build this up more toward a full swing. So again, we want to do the same thing, but we're going to go a full swing, right, full back swing, 
And when you come through and you get here, what I want you to do is you can actually take this pipe and that you can turn it over. So if I turn this way, you're gonna get here and then you can turn that over and go into the full finish and still make it to where it avoids your side. If you're hitting your side, then you gotta slow it down a little bit. But you wanna work, ideally work up to where you're basically doing this at full speed and this, and this pipe never ever touches your side from the time that you start the downswing or the time that you start the backswing. So again, I'm gonna go full swing uh, come through like that, and then I can turn it over. And just keep building up the speed, building up the speed, building up the speed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try that same thing with my seven iron again with a full swing. And again, I'm going slow. I'm not trying to go full speed with it. You're gonna have to resist the temptation to go full speed with it. Cause I'm telling you, the moment you go to full speed with this right away, you're gonna come, you may see it change a little bit, but most likely it's still gonna be pretty flippy. So what I want you to do is I want you to go really, really slow with this, get that really, really low ball flight, and then build it up. Now in a full swing, I'm probably not gonna be able to get 12.4, but I wanna see it fly a lot, lot lower. So my normal club head speed with a seven iron is probably around 95. I'm gonna to try to take a full swing here, get, it's still getting that, that shaft lean as I'm coming through and see, just go nice and slow and see how low I can get it going nice and slow. If I go too fast, then I'll need to try and go, do it a little bit slower here. So let's see how I can do here. All right, so that one there, I was able to do it in a full swing, get lots of shaft lean, 13.7 degrees on my dynamic loft. So from there, we may still have a problem. You see, when you come into impact without the hands in front, your lead wrist is gonna be cupped and your trail wrist is gonna be flat to have that face square. If you keep those same exact wrist angles and now you push those hands in front, now my club face is wide open and now we have a new problem, right? We're hitting the shots all to the right. We're getting the hands in front, but the ball just goes way to the right. So we need to learn the proper wrist angles that are gonna allow you to get that club face to square up. Ideally, this would happen in the start of the downswing so that way it's already done. You can set it and forget it and just turn through the ball, get those hands in front. You're gonna know that face is square every single time. You're gonna get that compression. That ball's gonna feel like a marshmallow rocketing off the face there. So this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method at Tospi Golf. And there are specific wrist angles that you need to know to get that club face square when the hands are in front. So if you'd like to see a preview of a great video by Clay Ballard, the founder of Tospi Golf, then all you have to do is stick around. But you, if you'd like to see the whole entire video where Clay goes over this anti-roll method, all you have to do is click the icon that's gonna pop up on, on your screen. If you don't see the icon pop up, no worries, just go below the video in the description. You can click the link there. Play well, talk to you soon. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, You'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,